Alrighty everybody, what's going on today? I hope you're all doing well. We're going to be leveling our engineering profession from 1 to 300 today. Before we jump into it though, just as always, if you've not seen the previous video in the series where we was digging for gold, get it? Digging for gold? Mining? Well anyways, you can find a card to that video in the upper right hand portion of the screen right now. Alternatively, you can find a link down below in the description to this video. You see, by leveling your mining to 300, you'll nearly have all of the required items for today's videos. It's because of this reason, you'll also have a much easier time getting to 300 in the engineering profession in WoW Classic. And it helps to save you some of your hard earned gold too. So since you may be able to save a decent chunk of gold by following both this guide and the mining guide, why not show me some support by giving the video a thumbs up? It really helps my video in the rankings so more people can benefit from it. Anyways, before we begin, just like always, let's talk some positives and negatives, if any. The downside to this professions are far and few. Nah, I'm just kidding. There are a few. The main one being, it can be hugely expensive to level if you don't already have a lot of the materials. It's not really something that will make you much gold. It is expensive to purchase certain materials for the more sought after craftable items, such as the force reactive disc or the field repair bot, for example. A lot of the items are mostly PVP orientated, meaning you won't get too many PVE items from this profession to use compared to the PVP items that it can offer. And finally, aside from a few crafted items, there isn't much that is amazing to use from this profession, which leads me on to the positives. Some absolutely amazing items from this profession are items such as the Arcane Bomb, which drains between 675 and 1125 mana from all enemies within the blast radius. On top of this, it also deals half of that mana drained as damage. Can you imagine blasting about 4 or 5 horde mana users in Arafi Basin at the blacksmiths when the game begins with this item? You dominate the base fairly quickly, that is for sure. As mentioned, the Force Reactive Disc is a great shield to use for PvE AoE farming, especially for us Paladins. On top of this, you've got other items such as the Repair Bot, which is super handy for your raid team, alongside items like the powerful C4 Room Charge, which essentially picks a lot of locks around Azeroth, plus a plethora of other nifty or fun items like a bunch of unique pets. To go along with this, despite it not being such a great in classic in my opinion, it does become much, much, much more lucrative in later expansions. Need I say any more? A final positive is that if you are prepared and you have all of the items I'm going to list later in the video, it is really fast and somewhat cheap to level. That's right, because I did level my mining to 300 before leveling engineering. I actually only spent about 45 gold and the total time it took me was actually under an hour, not including travel time. So who's it good for then? Actually, it's great for anybody. I would say even more so for slightly less able classes like myself as a paladin. I feel that a lot of the items from here would shine beautifully in PvP with items like the Gnomish Netomatic Projector or the Discombobulator Ray, which can both incapacitate or reduce the target's movement speed. So against the likes of the annoying mages or hunters, this would be a fantastic equalizer in the field of battle. With all of the above information, it's safe to say why it would be advantageous to have. Aside from that, it can also help you stand out from other players with your impressively diversified profession. Plus, if you're a melee class that can't use mana like warriors or rogues with the jumper cables you could res your healer if you wipe in a five man or a raid the items you will need are as follows 60 rough stones 66 copper bars 60 coarse stones, 50 linen cloth, 5 silver bars, 25 weak flux, 110 bronze bars, 30 heavy stones, 10 mosser gates, 60 wool cloth, 15 medium levers, 4 steel bars, 120 solid stones, 170 mithril bars, 20 mage weave cloth, 60 dense stones, 225 thorium bars, and 35 rune cloth. Moving on to the how to now, firstly, head on down to any engineering trainer and learn the apprentice skill in engineering. 
For me, at the start, I chose to go to Stormwind. There's no specific reason as to why, although it is closer to an anvil compared to the trainers in Ironforge. The trainer's name is Sprite Jump Sprocket and is found here as seen on the map. To start out with, you'll need to buy a blacksmithing hammer from the blacksmithing supply vendor. It's usually near your trainer or any general or trade goods vendor. Going from one to 30, you'll need to create 60 rough blasting powder. You will need the 60 rough for blasting powder later so keep a hold of these too. From 30 to 50 will require you to make 30 handful of copper bolts. You will need around 30 of these for later so keep a hold of these too. As soon as you've reached the skill of 50 make one arc light spanner and this will take you to the skill of 51. You will use this to craft engineering recipes later on, so keep a hold of this too. Now, to go from 51 to 75, you'll need to make 30 rough copper bombs. This should take you under 10 minutes in total. For me personally, it took 7 minutes and 25 seconds. Of course, excluding time to learn the new recipes or moving to and from an anvil and back to the trainer again. Journeyman Engineering. From 75 to 90, you'll need to make 60 coarse blasting powder keep these for later from 90 to 100 make 20 coarse dynamite to get from 100 to 105 create five silver contacts and it will require you five silver bars to make them 105 to 125 you will need to make 25 bronze tubes which this will also require 25 weak flux also which are sold by any engineering supply vendors near your trainer going from 125 to 135 you'll need to make 10 standard scopes this took me a total of six minutes and 35 Three seconds again not including traveling to and from the trainer or the anvil typically you're looking at around 10 minutes in total for this section expert engineering to begin going from 135 to 150 start making 30 heavy blasting powders after this begin making 15 wiring bronze gizmos you will need 30 heavy blasting powder and 15 wiring bronze gizmos for later on in the video so make these now and you should be able to reach just over 150 in skill points for 150 to 160 create 15 bronze frameworks keep these for later too now from 160 to 175 you'll need to make 15 explosive sheep once you're at 175 make one gyromatic micro adjuster and that should get you to 176 in skill keep this you'll need it to craft some of the engineering recipes later on 176 to 195 make 60 solid blasting powders again save these because you will need them later on finally from 195 to 200 make seven mithril tubes and of course this is where you begin to purchase items from the auction house the 15 medium lever for me only costs a total of three gold and the 60 wool cloth cost around 70 silver not a bad deal so far since we're nearly done this should have taken you around 15 minutes in total. Artisan Engineering well done for making it this far. We're on the final leg. For this final segment, we will need to travel down to a faraway place to find a masterful engineer, which unfortunately for us means going all the way down to Gadizan in Tanaris. The trainer's name is Buzzuk Bracket Swing. Weird name, by the way. And he's located right here as seen on the map just outside the inn. Once you've located him, learn the artisan engineering skill and going from 200 to 216, create 20 of the unstable triggers. Save these for later. Going from 215 to 238, make 40 mithril castings and again, save these for later. Now go from 238 to 250, make 20 high explosive bombs. Getting to 260, you'll need to make 30 dense blasting powders. This should have taking you to 260 if not make more for 260 to 285 make 35 thorium widgets unfortunately for this part you'll need to purchase the recipe fortunately for alliance it's sold by gear cutter cog spinner in iron forge located right here as seen on the map finally from 285 to 300 create 20 thorium tubes which unfortunately again will require you to go off to buy the schematic the schematic thorium tube Tube is sold by Zizzer Fizzbolt in Winter Spring at Everlook. In the first building to the right, as seen right here. And 
Boom, nice one. Congratulations, you've officially reached 300 in the engineering profession in WoW Classic. You're now well armed with the knowledge to be able to level your engineering skill in Classic WoW to 300 in a quick, easy and smooth manner. This final segment took me a total of 12 minutes, giving us a total time of under 60 minutes, excluding travel time. Awesome. Not only that, but the final thorium I needed to buy as well as the cloth for this segment only cost me a total of 34 gold. So in total, I spent around 45 gold to get from 1 to 300 in the engineering profession in WoW Classic. Not too shabby. If you've made it this far into the video, then thank you. I appreciate that you have. By watching the entire video, you're helping me out by letting YouTube know that this video is a helpful one. Which, if it was helpful to you, be sure to share it with all of your friends in game. You never know, they might be looking for an easy guide to follow such as this one. Also, if you've not already, then be sure to subscribe to the channel for much more helpful and unique Paladin content in WoW Classic. I upload videos weekly and live stream weekly also, so you'll rarely find this channel going dry. But until the next time, everybody, See ya.